here in America as well, which is forget the past. Before this coronavirus hit, he had the economy booming and red, yellow, black, and white Americans of all stripes were able to take advantage of American prosperity. Despite uh, President Trump's common sense approach, Joe Biden and Democrats aren't coming around to the same reality. They want to keep the schools closed. So this is Joe Biden. This is a man who wants to be president, and he can't find the time in his little video to say he's proud of this country. We've never lived up to it, he, he says. But I don't think that if Joe Biden was president, we would see these types of gains. It is because of Donald Trump's policies and what he has done to help our country grow again. Thank you, Mr. President. It's an honor to be here with you and to hear these stories on why the fight for freedom can never be forgotten. What is happening in our backyard today, I experienced as an 11 year old by a guy named Castro. Republicans are the party of freedom, Democrats are the party of socialism and worse. We are one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. America great again. Welcome to Team Trump Online. Hi, I'm Mercedes Schlapp, Senior Advisor for the Trump Pence Campaign, and yes, we are on the Pink Women for Trump bus tour here in Wisconsin. met with these great women small business owners who are talking about what the president has done to make sure that we're able to save their businesses during this tough time. In this great country, you can come from nothing and build greatness and build a great small business and expand your businesses to other states. And that is the greatness of America. Little lip gloss on top. Oh look, I can use a camera. why we have to get out there and fight for our families. If Joe Biden was elected, could you imagine what would happen in this country? But ladies, I mean, you just need to understand, no matter where we go, it's always a room full of women when they bring in the top volunteers. Headed to my favorite park, Cops of Canines. Team industry, wonderful corporation that's benefited greatly from President Trump's policies when it comes to lowering taxes, getting rid of job killing regulations, and great trade deals that President Trump has been able to accomplish. Wednesday just got better because the ladies are live discussing the hottest topics of the week with you tonight. And we will make America great again. Everybody, I'm Laura Trump and welcome to The Right View. With me as always is Kimberly Guilfoyle, Mercedes Schlapp and Katrina Pearson. Please be sure as always to like and share this broadcast with your friends. All right, let's get started ladies. Great to be back with you again. Mercy and Katrina, uh, since we last talked, you both got to go out on the road. I think Kimberly and I are so jealous. You were in the great state of Wisconsin 
for the Women for Trump bus tour. And tomorrow is actually the one year anniversary of our launch of our incredible coalition, Women for Trump. How very exciting for all of us. So tell us your most memorable moments. How was the trip? Uh, do you have the bus set up so that when Kimberly and I get on there, we got our nook, or did you guys take all the good spaces? Exactly. <laughs> Bus life. We have our designated spaces within the bus. That is true. But we missed you both oh, so yeah. much. And all those great women in Wisconsin were all like, how's Laura doing? Is Kim okay? We're praying for Kimberly. It was just oh, really spectacular. But of course, you both were so missed. But guess what? We're going to be doing these bus tours all the time. Right. So there's going to be a lot of a, a lot of opportunity to go meet these wonderful women across the country who love Donald Trump, who are literally working day in and day out uh, to make phone calls for the president and get our women on board. I think Katrina and I get, really felt the sense that they know that we've got to save America. And the yeah. only way to save America is by reelecting Donald J. Trump. But I think there was one particular stop that we made, and we made a lot of them, but that really impacted both of us and the ladies on the bus. Pam Bondi was with us as well as uh, Penny Nance, and it was called Emma Loves Dogs. Dot org. It's their it's their organization. It's their foundation. It's a beautiful couple who lost their daughter Emma, eight year old Emma, to brain to a brain cancer, and uh, it was and really her. What happened was is that there was this outpour from the police departments and from the sheriff's office that they would bring their canines because she loves dogs, so they would bring their canines over to to be with her. So following a chemotherapy or following an operation, those canine dogs with these police officers would come to her bedside. And there's one beautiful photo of uh, Emma with the canine dog, huge dog, German Shepherd, in her bed. Uh, oh and those gosh. parents were just so, so spectacular and really uh, shared with us that beautiful story. And so after she passed away, they started this foundation to help raise funds for the police officers who want to train these canines. So they, they're able to purchase the dog, they're able to train the dog, and then those dogs are on the front lines with these police officers to combat crime. Oh, and so it's an, it. an amazing story of our police officers and our law enforcement who love America, who are part of the community, and who keep our community safe. And I think the story of Emma was just so uh, so touching. We had Laura, you called in, you got to talk I know. to parents. I was so excited whenever you, you said, like, we're here with Emma's parents. Do you have two minutes? And I was like, oh my gosh, it was amazing. I got to talk to them. And mm. what a cool thing that they, they have done. I mean, for these, these police officers, which God bless our law enforcement officers all across this country. My cousin actually happens to be a sheriff's deputy in Alabama, and he is a canine officer. And these dogs, I mean, they're part of your family. You're, the, his kids love the, the dogs that he's had throughout the years. And uh, what an incredible thing. And I said, as soon as I spoke to Emma's parents, and Mercy, you handed them the phone, I said, Emma and I would have been very good friends because oh, yeah, I yeah. also love oh. dogs as, in and case I, nobody's heard. I took yeah. my daughter with me, Alyssa, 13 years old. She was just so emotional. Oh. Katrina was standing right by my side and she goes, I can't talk. I just can't talk. I can't talk. <laughs> Because yeah. we were just crying and crying, but it was because it just was this beautiful story of how these parents are carrying on their daughter's legacy and helping our police yeah. officers, which is just, it was just so beautiful. So beautiful. Yeah. What about you, Katrina? How was it for you? Yeah, you know, to Mercy's point, I couldn't even speak because the father would start crying and the mother would have to pick up telling the story, particularly at the end of Emma's life. Um, she would not get out of her hospital bed. And the hospital made an exception to allow one of the dogs to come into the hospital. And she got out of her hospital bed just oh to, to be with the dog. And so I was at a loss for words. Yes, it is true. And that was <laughs> the, the most moving moment um, that I think I had experienced on this trail. I mean, you know, we've been doing these, these tours for a very long time, Laura. And, yeah. you know, it's just truly a shame that, you know, you missed this one. So we'll have to go back. So, yeah see these dogs and, and the law enforcement officers who love them dearly. And, you know, we went to a wonderful, uh, empowering moment roundtable with women 
who were business owners and who actually benefited from the president's uh, paycheck protection policies and were able to keep their businesses open and had some very thoughtful and, and inspiring moments. We went out to Odenhoven's farm uh, where we sat with a family. I think there were like, what, Mercedes, was it like three generations of a family yeah, there? three generations. Three wow. generations on the dairy farm. And it was beautiful. And this family uh, gave us some really wonderful insight on how the supply chain has impacted them directly and how they were able to stay afloat and some of the other farms that were impacted. And Mercedes and I, you know, we just took it all in and brought whatever we could back and, and really just had a great time in the state of Wisconsin. Wow. And, you know, Mercy's right. People are ready to get this president reelected. And we let them know that we're here. We're ready to fight and bring Wisconsin back home to Trump. All right. Well, next time you won't be so lucky as to have the whole bus to yourselves because Kimberly and I are coming. Uh, yeah. Kimberly, we were home, but how about your weekend? What happened with you? Uh, it was good. I'm working on the uh, big fundraiser for the president. And it's uh, it was really great because we have a big Zoom event that the president's going to participate in. So I've been raising a lot of money for that. So I'm pretty excited. It actually went very well. And it's great because even when you're home quarantine, you can still use the phone and dial for dollars. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I like to do that. And then I just, you know, cooked uh, for Don Jr. within an inch of my life. And every eight minutes I heard, princess, I haven't eaten anything in eight minutes. <laughs> Well, That's God forbid, let's keep him fed. My gosh. Oh my Just here, I've got, I've got a stand for you. I'm going to stand for you. Yes, I cook with Goya okay. every night. Yes, good, yes, yes. Good. Well, I'm shipping it over to your house. There I you love go. It. Well, love you it. need some ri more rice and beans tonight. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Amazing. Well, my husband uh, decided that our son Luke should take golf lessons. Now, I want to remind everybody Luke is not yet three years old, okay? Uh, doesn't really know anything about golf, really has no interest. However, uh, Eric said, let's send him out by himself with a golf pro. Now, this poor golf pro, I mean, I owe this guy, I should give him just a full day at a spa somewhere to relax because uh, as you'll see from the video, my son decided to just lay down in the golf cart. No, he's not doing anything. He threw the golf club in the fountain. <laughs> um, so it sounds like I'm going to need to be going and supervising uh, from now on because that is not how we get down at my house. We do not do things like that. Uh, but it's been an interesting, uh, interesting time. I use the, the term golf lessons very loosely. Uh, so we're going to see about that. Luke has another thing coming the next time he goes out with, uh, with this guy. So God bless this, this uh, young individual who took on uh, my son, Luke. We're not going to have that anymore. So yeah, that's what happens when you leave the men in charge of planning things for the kids. Um, all right, let's get started. Yesterday, Joe Biden delivered a speech on clean energy, which translation really means job killing economic plan. We knew this trillion dollar plan would be absolutely destructive to our energy industry. Now, Katrina, you live in Texas. What would this mean to workers in Texas and how uh, will it impact the future of American energy independence? Well, you know, we wouldn't have American uh, energy independence with Joe Biden in charge. And there are millions of jobs at risk here in my state of Texas under this assault by Joe Biden and the radical left. And, you know, a third of a trillion dollars to the state's economy. You know, Texas is the leading oil and gas producer, delivering a third of the nation's oil and a quarter of its natural gas. So just imagine what that would do to our state and our country, because Joe Biden wants to ban fracking and he would do so and immediately eliminating over three million jobs in an instant, Laura, and take 1.5 trillion of our state's economy and wipe it out of existence. Texas does not have a state income tax unless Joe Biden gets elected. So I'm willing to bet uh, you know, that a lot of Texans are thinking about this now, particularly after his discussion, um, and probably looking at moving to Florida or Tennessee if that ever happens. But we all know that's not gonna happen because Texans are smart. We know what works for us. We are very much an independent state and we're gonna fight to keep our oil and gas. Uh, Mercy, can you explain to us the dangers and devastation that this $2 trillion plan would have on the economy? 
Well, let me tell you a little secret here. It's going to be more than $2 trillion. We've seen yeah. the American Action Forum. It's a nonprofit group. They're saying it could cost up to $7 trillion. So let's be real. We have already seen a Joe Biden who has created this unified agenda with the socialist Bernie Sanders. It's the socialist manifesto is what we're seeing. So not only are we seeing the clean energy speech as being part of the economic plan, but we know we're going to see huge tax increases coming, impacting over 82 percent of Americans. Our corporate tax is going to be higher than China's. I mean, this is what we're dealing with. So you have to think about the economic devastation that a Joe Biden socialist economic plan will have on America. And it is why we have to ensure that the American people understand that this would lead to job loss. It would lead to businesses continuing to close. And at this state in, our, in the game right now, we cannot afford any more job yeah. loss in America. In fact, that's why President Trump has focused in on making sure this economy is strong as we get through this coronavirus pandemic. Well, it's becoming clearer than ever that Joe Biden is truly beholden to the radical socialist ideology of Bernie Sanders and AOC, as you just mentioned, Mercedes. I mean, in some ways, Joe Biden is like their Trojan horse. Like, oh, here's this nice, frail old man. Don't don't think anything of him. You better start thinking about it because he's coming for you. They're pushing him in there. And then all across this country, they're implementing these job-killing socialist Marxist policies that would destroy America. So, Kimberly, how is Joe Biden going to sell his extreme agenda to blue-collar workers in industrial states like Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, and Wisconsin? Yeah, well, the truth is he won't be able to. Joe Biden, Biden is not putting his campaign in the hands of the voters. He's putting it in the hands of the mainstream media's besties, that he was just really just acting as an arm of the Democrat Party. Joe Biden continues to run away from questions. He embraces these radical, dangerous policies, yet the media continues to cover up for him left and right. Um, that is why it's so important that uh, we are doing broadcasts like this, like The Right View, right here, because we're able to actually get the truth, the facts, the information out to every viewer. And we're also able to share this broadcast and make it manifest, go forward, you know? And the media is not going to hold Joe Biden accountable. Not today, not tomorrow, not ever. They're gonna spin it, they're gonna deflect, and they're gonna lie to get the outcome that they really truly desire. And the truth is Joe Biden's policies will destroy America's working class. It will not support it whatsoever. It'll destroy manufacturing jobs and push the American dream straight out of this country and export it to other countries for millions of hardworking Americans. And this would be an absolute devastating tragedy. His policies are gonna hurt the very people who actually need the most support and help right now. So whether you're in Wisconsin, you're in Michigan, you're Pennsylvania, or even California for that matter, it is time to actually seriously pay attention, to get engaged, because this election is really going to matter to you. And you don't want to wake up November 4th and figure it all out then. Yeah. And by the way, you don't even have to take our word for it. You look at what Joe Biden has already done. Look at under the eight years of the Obama-Biden administration, all of the jobs we lost overseas all of the mistakes that were made, the job killing regulations, the shipping manufacturing jobs overseas. Remember we were told they would never come back to America. Guess what? Donald Trump brought them back. So if you wonder what Joe Biden would do, he's already done it. You've already right. seen the proof is in the pudding. No except surprise. now it is so much farther left. It is so much more extreme than even during the, the uh, Obama Biden years. This would be absolute devastation. I don't think our country could ever recover God forbid he got his hands on things. Very, very scary. All right, ladies, thank you so much. We're going to have to take a quick commercial break. Everybody stay where you are. We'll be right back. Joe Biden can't fix our economy. Biden supports massive tax increases on working families, trade deals that let China and Mexico steal our jobs, amnesty for illegal immigrants competing for American jobs. America would become diminished and weak, just like Biden. President Trump gave us the strongest economy America has ever known. Millions of new jobs, lowest unemployment rate for black and Hispanic Americans, and he will do it again. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. As we have already seen, his America First agenda has lifted all Americans up and have empowered them with true economic emancipation that has once again made the American dream possible. That's why I want you to text EMPOWER to 88022 
right now if you want to keep America great and deliver four more years for President Donald J. Trump. Welcome back to The Right View. I'm Kimberly Guilfoyle, National Chair of Trump Victory Finance Committee. And joining us now is Dr. Scott Schmidt, board certified psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner and founding partner of the Arita Center. Dr. Schmidt, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, pleasure to, pleasure to be here for sure. So I'm excited to have a little conversation on what people's mental health looks like right now and what we can do about it to uh, really make things better because it's a stressful time. So thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, President Trump and many parents you know, around the country, they've really been pushing to get schools open, to do it safely this fall. But so many Democrats, as you see in the talking heads out there and teachers unions, are adamantly against reopening schools for in-person learning. So, Dr. Schmidt, should American schools safely reopen this fall? What is your thought about this? And can it be done um, you know, safely bearing in mind that teachers are concerned about uh, getting a virus from children, but we have some strong science that shows that shouldn't be um, something to be alarmed about. Right. We know that especially school-age children under 12 are really unlikely to have viral loads where they're actually causing community spread. So this is uh, definitely a cohort of students that um, I think need to be back in school. We saw in Europe and Asia that they sent kids back to school successfully, which is really important. But I think it comes back down to what people are stressed about. In my practice, I see lots of stress. Out of 100 people, 99% of them are not so worried about coronavirus. We know it's something to take seriously, but most of these people are worried about how can I work from home and also take care of my children, especially when schools reopen? We're in this summer period of time right now that has afforded a little bit of flexibility, but people are really, really nervous about when school starts back up, how they can work. A lot of people are working from home. And we do know, though, that stress, I think we have to go back to that, the negative effects of stress, right? Heart disease, 650 million, or 650 thousand people a year die of heart disease. That's the number one killer of people in the United States. Suicide, over 45,000 okay. people. These are stress-related things. Diabetes, 83,000 people. And what we know is that stress actually can cause things like heart disease, diabetes, and of course, can lead to things like depression and other stress-related disorders, which increase suicide rates. So I think that um, it's a really big problem. Right? We know mental illness alone in the United States costs hundreds of billions of dollars a year to employers. Uh, this is a really important issue. I know President Trump has done a good job passing recent legislation uh, through an executive order about suicide, and specifically the veteran, which sits dear to my heart as a veteran myself. Um, so, yeah, I think the, the key is, though, is how we manage stress. If we know in the workplace that stress is causing absenteeism, is causing difficulty with being present if you're there, decreased performance, we know that in kids, right, stress is going to cause absenteeism, cause decreased performance in school. So we really need to work on getting back to Absolutely. Stress is a killer. And I appreciate you bringing up all the other factors. There's so many other things going on now besides people getting sick. And it is alarming, the number of suicides as well. On uh, Monday, the Los Angeles Unified School District said it's going to start the school year fully remote. So this is sort of the beginning of the rollout that we see in some of the blue states where they're really encouraging people to stay home even in the fall. Dr. Schmidt, can you talk about the long-term consequences of children being isolated, you know, away from their schools, their friends, their peer groups for extended period of time? Now, keep in mind, this already started in, in March uh, of this year. So imagine then going all the way into the fall. Um, there's no telling if they'll see a time in school before the end of the year? The only school-age kids that are doing well right now are the ones that have social anxiety disorder. But this is bad for them because we need to expose them to other people. But they're, they're enjoying being away from right. other people. However, the vast majority of kids are feeling isolated. They're feeling lonely. They, they need stimulation. They need social connection. And that school provides more than just 
the math and reading and science. Basic education, of course, is super important. And we're afraid that kids are going to fall behind, right? The mm -hmm. American Pediatric Association came out and said that it's important for kids to be in school. Um, this is something that I really worry about. And again, people, if you put a whole bunch of stressed people in a room, they feed off of each other. And if you have mom and dad at home stressed and you have kids at home stressed, it's just really a recipe for isolation and just not a pretty picture. So I, it, we have to have kids go back to school. Um, and, and again, in Europe, they're, they weren't having uh, quotas. They weren't having part-time on, part-time off. They were sending kids back to school, full classrooms. These are things that we have seen successfully done. I know there is some concern about uh, older children, adolescents, uh, college-age students. Um, and But we do know, though, and we're learning more all the time, so at least what the science says now is that asymptomatic carriers, so people that have the infection are not necessarily likely to spread. That's actually pretty rare. At first, we were, we were hearing lots of different news, but that's what we know right now. So I think, um, you know, if somebody's sick, they should definitely stay home. That's the right thing to do. But we can't go along. I, I mentioned all these statistics about things that actually are killing people in big numbers, right? You mm -hmm. have 130,000 people a year dying from accidents but we don't not drive on, we have to move forward. And I think that's such an important piece. All right, fantastic. And, and Mercy, you know, you have five young children and as a working parent, what do you think and why, you know, that it's critical uh, for schools to reopen this fall for children? Well, I think I might have to call Dr. Schmidt after this, uh, after this live show here, because, uh, you know, I listening to you speak, doctor, I mean, there is so much stress and come to the Schlapp household. We're, we're a great example of two working parents and trying to manage five different children, uh, which have experienced a tremendous amount of stress because of distance learning and because of the fact that some of these schools have really failed our children during this time. Uh, and so what's, what's really troubling for me is that at the end of the day, the goal should be that the learning continues. The learning must continue and that the goal should be to serve our children first and foremost, not the teachers unions. No, this is about how can we get the get the kids back into school safely. And I think your points on talking about how these other countries have managed it is so important for working parents, for single parents, for those parents who depend on the schools for even their, their child's nutrition. It's creating a huge problem. And I just think this whole time, full time distance learning is so detrimental. And I've seen it firsthand to these children who need the social interaction, who need the interaction with their teacher, who also learn better in that one on that one on one setting of uh, being present there. And, you know, it's funny because they all want to say, oh, our kids are so digital. Well, no they get isolated, they get sad. It's, it's very heartbreaking to watch. And that's why President Trump has been right on in supporting reopening schools while you have Joe Biden saying, absolutely, absolutely not, I stand with the teachers unions. All right, well, Joy Behar, bless her heart, uh, made a blatantly false statement on The View claiming that Republicans do not care about children or education. Let's play the clip and we'll get your reaction. So according to the Kaiser Family <laughs> Foundation, 1.5 million teachers are at greater risk of serious yeah. illness if infected by the coronavirus. One in four teachers. Yeah. That's a lot. You know what really is really, really ma making me uh, uh, amusing me today is this idea that uh, the Republican Party cares about education. They've been spending the last few decades defunding education. Uh, and they think that we're going to believe this baloney that they're throwing at us now that they care about our children. Give me a break. Donald Trump only cares about getting reelected, full stop. And we know from John Bolton and other sources, right on the front lines with him, that that is his ultimate goal. That's all he cares about. Please. Well, I don't think it's fair to say Republicans don't care, don't don't care about children. All right, well, Katrina and Laura, I have to get your reaction to this. I mean, Newsflash, she's literally saying the Republicans don't care about children. 
Katrina, what do you what do you think of this? Yeah, you know, Kimberly, I find it odd to see these these liberals who support, you know, abortion post birth to to call somebody else a, someone who doesn't care about children. I think the irony there uh, stands by itself. But I'll also say that you know, not reopening schools disproportionately impacts minority children. So we're talking about the health and safety, but what about the actual education of these children? You know, a lot of them don't have the tools or resources to learn online. They don't have laptops or devices or even an internet connection. So it's extremely disturbing to just gloss over the impact that all of this has had on children to push your own political narrative against the opposition party. It's frankly disgusting. Yeah, no kidding. Laura, uh, what do you make of it? You, just when you think the view can't top themselves, they do. <laughs> well, of course they do, and it's joy. So as we said, uh, entering this, bless her heart. Uh, this is ridiculous. I mean, she's using John Bolton as as her crux exactly. there. Oh, well, John Bolton says, really, John Bolton, the guy that wouldn't even go speak in front of Congress because he wanted to write a book, and he knew that everything that he said in that book, if he testified under oath, was not going to be taken seriously. I mean, right, this guy, he's though. ridiculous. Yeah. This is this is crazy. Here's what I'll tell you. I know as a mom, I have an almost three year old son, who is in school and and started school last September. The fact that he has not been able to be around kids his own age, I can see having an impact on him. I had somebody come fix my air conditioner the other week. This air conditioning guy, my son was obsessed with literally grabbing right. this guy by the hand, wanting him to come <laughs> play with him. And I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, this guy's play day. very easy. Like this poor guy was probably like, let me get the heck out of this house. But the problem here is that the Democrats are, are desperately trying to fear monger. They are trying to keep our country shut down. They're trying to keep our children from going back to school because they think it's politically advantageous for them to do. They ultimately don't really care about our children. When you look at the fact that around 30 children under the age of 18 have died from coronavirus, let me say that again, 30 children, okay? Now that's 30 too many and nobody wants to hear that. But you contrast that with the fact that every single day in this country, nine teenagers die in car accidents. I mean, what are we going to say? Well, then let's stop sending them out in cars. Let's get every car off the road. Those are a hazard to people's health. But no, we keep people in cars. And you know why? Because it is a necessity for life. We know we cannot go on. We cannot go forward without them. So I would ask parents out there, instead of listening to all this fear mongering talk that the mainstream media is pushing out there, that the Democrats are desperate to get out there, think about the statistics. There are 75 million kids in this country under the age of 18, and we've had 30 deaths. I have zero problem sending my kids to school. I feel like it is a very, very safe Absolutely. thing for them to do. I think it is vital to the development of children, to uh, obviously their education, but there are so many other factors here that nobody ever thinks about. What about the rest of the people whose jobs are dependent on schools? What about custodians? What about bus drivers? You think about the fact that oftentimes abuse is noticed in children, uh, abuse that they're receiving at home by teachers. You think about the fact that there are millions of kids in this country that rely on school lunches to get their food every single day. And, and, and what about them? This is crazy. The fact that we are talking about and seriously considering keeping school, schools closed, I think is a purely political move by the left. And if parents just take the fear that the media has tried to instill in all of us out of it and look at the pure numbers here, there is no reason we shouldn't be sending our kids back to school. Absolutely. And they're politicizing it and they're hurting children in the process. I mean, education is a necessity. To me, it's like food and water. They need to be able for their development and for their future to get a good education. They deserve that in this country. And that's why we support this president who believes children belong in school. And so many children don't even get a good meal except for the, the food that they get in school, not to right. mention that. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. I know my son can't wait to go back uh, to school, you know, so and he's going to be uh, 14 uh, in the fall. So yeah. it's really important for their development as well. They're already on computers too much and, you know, get playing games online. All right, Dr. Schmidt, so what message do you want to send to parents and teachers across this country right now to persuade them about the importance of this issue? Well, I can, you know, really just speak to the fact that I talk to kids for my profession and I hear what they've been saying. And I've been hearing what they've been saying since March and actually when they started leaving schools in mass, there was a hiatus in learning. 
And what Mercedes said is totally accurate. We need to make sure kids are actually learning. And the problem is, is when I had a lot of my patients struggle with academically and they come and see me and we work together, but wow, they were so happy that they said, I'm doing nothing. This is a problem. We, we really need to make sure that kids are getting, and you know what? These are really good school districts out in Denver that I'm working with kids at. And still, it's very difficult to do a total remote learning process. I think just the mechanics of that, and that's talking about school districts that are equipped to do that. I'm right. worried about the school districts that don't have the capacity to do that, let alone, we're talking about the, the kids that are hardest to take care of are the kids that have less autonomy, which means younger children. And you have younger children who, how is a seven-year-old going learning on a Zoom. laptop? Yeah, this is just not no feasible way. without mm -hmm. substantial support from the parents. And if parents aren't required to give this substantial support for learning, they can't work. And when they can't work, that increases stress in the household. And like I said at the beginning, stress is a big time player in overall mortality and morbidity worldwide. So, you know, major depression, number one cause of disability in the world. We want to prevent these types of things. So mm -hmm. if we can get people back to work, back to school, this is key. So that would be my message. It's so, so incredibly important. So many kids don't have the resource, don't have the laptops, or what about children with learning differences or special needs? I mean, ki children are literally going to lose an academic year because of this, almost even, you know, into the second academic year, almost two academic years. Well, well Dr. Kim yeah, Kimberly, go ahead. can I add real quick? I mean, uh, I grew up in a household where my parents spoke hardly any English. They could have never helped me with doing online yeah. Uh, learning. And so you have to remember, it's a lot of, to, to Katrina's point, it's the Latinos, it's like the, 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 you know, black, black Americans, like it is such a stress on these working families. And like on the Latino side, I'll tell you, a lot of these folks cannot, they can't help their kids. And so it, it really, I think is so detrimental. And I think parents need to be able to have a choice. Like, I think that where we need to get to, if you really are scared and you don't want your kid to go to school, I respect that. But you got to respect those parents who are saying, yeah, I need my kid back in, in a learning environment so that they can socialize. I think they yeah. need to have those flexibility, that option and adjust accordingly. The problem is you're seeing so many of the school districts just take a one lane approach, which I think is very detrimental. Mm -hmm. So totally true. And Dr. Schmidt, thank you so much. What a pleasure having you on the program with us today. And I will be right back after this short commercial break with more of The Right View. Stay with us. I'm Donald Trump, and I approve this message. My administration will take all necessary steps to safeguard our citizens from this threat. Hysterical xenophobia. Be giving Americans a false sense. Is it accurate that if these uh, steps had not been put in place, it could have been two billion people dead here in the United States? Yes. No matter how hard they try to stop us, they can't. We built the greatest economy the world has ever seen, and we're going to do it again. <laughs> Together, we're beating back the invisible enemy. What the federal government did was a phenomenal accomplishment. Through it all, the world has witnessed the unyielding resolve of our incredible American people. Promise made, promise kept. And I'm fighting for you, and I love doing it with everything that I have. And you know that. With the grace of God, we will win this war, and we will win this war quickly. And we will make America great again. We know you want to give Donald Trump four more years to fight for you in Washington, but he isn't just up against Joe Biden. He's up against the Democrat fundraising machine, and he needs all the help he can get. Don't just assume because his opponent hasn't completed a single sentence that this campaign is over. Crazy things happen, like this woman becoming Speaker of the House. Support the president today by texting Trump to 88022. Donald Trump is counting on every single one of his supporters to text Trump to 88022 now. I'm Donald Trump, and I approve this message. And welcome back to The Right View. I'm Katrina Pearson, Senior Advisor for President Trump's re-election campaign. And in recent weeks, the left has ramped up their cancel culture movement. This movement, championed by Joe Biden and the Democrats, is meant to fundamentally change our American way of life. And the most recent example of this is Goya Food Boycott. Now, we've all heard about this, and this is the largest Hispanic American-owned food company after their CEO 
Robert Unanue appeared alongside President Trump last week during the Hispanic Prosperity Initiative at the White House. Let's watch this clip. We're all truly blessed at the same time to have a leader like President Trump, who is a builder. And that's what my grandfather did. He came to this country to build, to grow, to prosper. And so we have an incredible builder and we pray. We pray for our leadership, our president, and we pray for our country that we will continue to prosper and, and to grow. Now, Mercy and Kimberly, I know you both have very strong reaction to this, this, this absurdity, but Mercy, let's start with you. What are your thoughts on this? This is when like my Latina hothead comes out, okay? <laughs> like it's bad because here's the deal. I grew up on these products. This is such a staple of my life. And to know that this man has been, you know, he has lived the American dream. He has fed, I mean, I'd say millions of Latinos, not only here in the United States, but across Latin America. And for the, for the Democrats to go after a success story, someone who we are proud of for what he has done in America, is just so, uh, it's so disgusting. I mean, it just shows that even if the CEO said, said one positive thing about the president, that they would shoot him down and try to destroy his company. It is what the left does. They target anyone, anyone who speaks favorably about the president. We're used to it because it happens to us every single day. But for this man who's a successful businessman to get attacked is outrageous. But I will add, as I'm going to promote his products, you guys, I love it. On Twitter, I, you, you see all these people, they're like, I just bought all this Goya stuff. I have no idea what to do with it. <laughs> I think they're so, sold out in grocery stores, are, right? I keep right. seeing this. That's And so fantastic. I think Kimberly and I should, yeah. should like do a couple of these cooking things. This is the mohole. This is very critical. So mm -hmm. this, you literally buy a pork shoulder and like stab it with holes and put garlic and oil marinated. and salt and pepper mm -hmm. marinade and just pour this whole thing on top. And then you yeah. just really massage the meat and then throw it in the oven, you know, until it gets cooked. So I, I have to say, this is my favorite Goya product besides the black beans, of course, which we have over here. Mm -hmm. But the mojo is critical for your meat. So we're happy if you have it's any so questions, good. just DM me <laughs> on Twitter. I've been cooking with Kimberly. Yes, I, I do. We do a whole episode. I'll, I love Kimberly, I'll take you on, okay? I can cook this food too. We'll take it on. Take it on the road. Well, Laura so and I can do the We're taste having uh, we'll the roast taste pork thing. and arroz con gandules tonight, and there I cook Goya go. every day. So people said to me, Kimberly, where did you get that big Goya like gift package sent here? I'm like, what do you, what gift package? I was all excited. I said, did someone send me a gift package of Goya? This is amazing. Um, and no, I didn't get sent a gift package. But it's everything that I cook with every night. I have like the cooking wine, I have the beans, I have the adobo, I have the garlic powder, I have all the uh, little uh, the chicken bouillon that they have. Anyway, all of it. And so I love it. I grew up with that. My mother used it all the time, and my aunt, my aunt um, uh, Juanita, and my aunt uh, Mariana, my mom or said the same name. Uh, so it was just fun. It was just part of my life growing up. And, um, you know, God bless them for sticking up. And I, I got to tell you, I'm excited because more people are going to cook better now that they have some uh, Goya in their life. Don and I had a little Goya party and we did a little Malta and we did a little boomerang. And he was like, oh. what am I doing? It was, and then he drank it all, of course. And it's great. It's like a little malt beverage, not alcoholic. Um, so I don't know. I'm not sure how far the left is going with this moronic cancel culture and that's what it is it's totally moronic but here is just you know some of the other things the democrats want to cancel okay besides goya washington's uh, football team they're totally against anti syrup they want to cancel rice they want to cancel comedy highways to god forbid transportation that's aoc um the emancipation memorial memorial they want to cancel all law enforcement defund the police and basically america as we know it so if you're into all that then you would vote for joe biden and and what we're dealing with right now is crazy you actually would never think you would see this day right it sounds like a science fiction movie but uh in law school we're taught there are actually three ways to win a case if you have the facts on your side you pound home the facts if you have law on your side you pound home the law but if you do not have the facts or the law then you just pound the table and make a lot of noise and that's what they're doing that is basically the marching brand tune of the Democrats and what they're doing, trying to defeat President Trump. They got no game, uh, no action, no ideas. 
um, but it's not going to work. And the American people are actually paying attention and jumping on board. And like President Trump, um, his tweet this week, he said, you know, on November 3rd, the silent majority will reign. I love it. I can't wait. Yeah, you know, I'm excited about that, too, because we saw this, you know, similarly in 2016, when you get the little thumbs up from people who just didn't want to deal with the backlash. And I think we're going to have that again. But Kimberly, you mentioned they they canceled pretty much everything now, so I'm not quite sure what's left. But Mercy and I also met this, this nice uh, young girl named Samantha who attends Marquette, and she spoke up with her voice, and they tried to cancel her college. So they really do want to cancel everything, Laura, and this this toxic cancel culture really has no limits. I mean, we've just spoken of all of the crazy things. I mean, there's an assault on my maple syrup for crying out loud. So, which is delicious. It's it's the best. I mean, that's just how absurd it is. And I can tell you all that a lot of people feel the exact same way that we do based upon what we see online. But speaking online, um, you know, there was a tragedy that occurred over the last week and there was a daughter uh, of one of two cops killed uh, this weekend, actually, in an ambush in McAllen, Texas. And this young girl was attacked on Twitter for posting the hashtag Blue Lives Matter as a remembrance post for her fallen father, Officer Ismail Chavez. Laura, what does this say about the left that they'll even attack willfully a grieving daughter for honoring her father who was killed in the line of duty? Well, they know no limits. And I mean, Kimberly said it. The The reality is when you don't have a response, an educated, fact-based response to things, this is all you do. I mean, I think about my two-year-old son. Again, I brought him up like in every segment in this, but it's so applicable because when a two-year-old doesn't have a good response to things, they're just like, no, right? They just throw up right. it, no. This is literally what we are seeing happen on the left because they know that their argument is is based in all sorts of fallacy, that the things they're proposing are, are, do not make sense. These are individuals that are supporting, again, defunding police, looting, rioting, burning down small businesses, okay. but they are trying to cancel Paw Patrol, Gone with the Wind, Mary Poppins, Uncle Ben's Rice, uh, Lando Lake's Butter. Are you serious? This is literally a two-year-old temper tantrum coming to fruition on the Democrat side. It is absolutely ridiculous. And I always say this, but this is the kind of stuff that really gets under people's skin. Everyday people who just want to be able to turn on the TV, put on Paw Patrol for their kids. I want to be able to go and buy some Lando Lakes butter. And you know what, Aunt Jemima, I've been eating her pancakes and using that syrup my entire life. How sad is it that this woman's legacy is now tarnished and gone because these people couldn't get control of themselves. They threw a tantrum and want to cancel everything. And we also saw recently that a New York Times reporter has fully left the organization because she said she was basically canceled there because she, and by the way, this woman was like crying at her desk the day that Donald Trump was elected, the day after the election in 2016, not a Trump supporter, but she had a center right ideology and she tried to present facts to people and they said, we're canceling you too. We've seen it across the board, but I think Americans are waking up. And I think that when this is under everybody's skin and it's under a lot of people's skin, November 3rd is going to be a landslide victory for Donald Trump. They're never going to talk about it. I think we'll maybe not even get all the thumbs ups, Katrina, like we did, like the low key thumbs up in the airport, people. Because they're scared to say anything. <laughs> but when you go in a voting booth, folks, not a single soul is going to know who you vote for. So you go in there and you vote with your heart and you vote with your conscience and you vote with your gut and you vote for what you know Absolutely. is going to turn this country around. Because this cancel culture crap, everybody is over. It's ridiculous. Get a hold of yourselves, Democrats. My gosh. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's too bad that we don't have Dr. Schmidt on for this segment because you mentioned the behavior yeah. of a two-year-old, Laura. And Dr. Schmidt would be able to tell you that two-year-olds are very self-centered and narcissistic because (laughs) they want everything their way. And we are absolutely seeing this with grown-ups. This is the the generation where everybody got a trophy. (laughs) No one had to work for anything. Everything was handed to them. And they want the whole world to conform to their own personal world. And we're seeing maybe this they, play out Maybe uh, they need a time, the out. Well, could, uh, time yes, out. Yes, I agree. And I'm not changing any Democrat's diaper, okay? Not <laughs> doing it.
Not happening well, they here. they clearly all have dirty diapers because they're very cranky and very irritated. Yes, very angry all the yeah. time. So, ladies, uh, great discussion. We have one more commercial break, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. The radical left-wing mob's agenda? Take over our cities, defund the police, pressure more towns to follow, and Joe Biden stands with them. Cutting police funding. Yes, uh, absolutely. Eliminating cash bail, letting criminals back on the street, violent crime exploding, innocent children fatally shot. Who will be there to answer the call when your children aren't safe? I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. Welcome back to The Right View. I'm Mercedes Schlapp, Senior Advisor for Strategic Communications. Ladies, I'd like to get your final thoughts, but first, we, before we do that, we're gonna talk about a few ways that you all who are watching can get involved. Let's download the new groundbreaking Trump 2020 app now available on Apple and Android. Sign up to volunteer, register for events, and win exclusive prizes. You can also stay in contact with us. Please text Trump to 88022. If you or your friends, family or neighbors want to be involved in our fight to reelect President Donald J. Trump, please visit armyfortrump.com to sign up. There is no time to sleep. There's only time to work. That's what the ladies here at The Right View do every single day. But before we leave you, I want to get some final thoughts. Laura, I'll start with you. All right, well, uh, I hope everyone takes my final thought. Um, it's, it's very serious. I'm just kidding. It's really not. I got a delivery for my dogs, Ben and Charlie. A friend of mine sent me two of these beautiful Nancy Pelosi dog toys. Oh, my God. The nice oh, thing is that crazy. she's wearing a little uh, flag pen. Uh, so I guess that's uh, she's all good to go there. She's got her flag pen. She doesn't have her scarf on, so this must have been pre-COVID uh, that she always has on. But my dogs are loving it. We're already down to just one of the two. And so thank you, oh Nancy. God. We're loving them at home. Beautiful. <laughs> I love it. Kimberly. I have two things I want to touch on. This month, President Trump's campaign and joint committees will hit a major milestone in our effort to reelect the president. One billion dollars raised. We are actually going to hit it three months earlier than both former President Obama in 2012 and Hillary Clinton in 2016. And these funds are ensuring this campaign is able to build the biggest and most aggressive political operation in the history of presidential politics. With the convention right around the corner and 111 days until the election, we are in a strong position financially to make sure we have the fuel in the tank to deliver President Trump four more years. And second, I have a message for all those liberals who want to cancel anything and everything they do not like. Grow up. America is about freedom. It is about choice. It is about boundless opportunity and hope. We have accomplished a lot as a nation by uniting to solve problems. And if your only solution is to yell cancel, I hate to break it to you, but you are part of the problem. However, there is hope. Stop buying into everything the media and the Democrats are throwing at us in an attempt to divide us. You can challenge their lies and hold them accountable. Together, we can continue to make America a more perfect union, but we can only do it together. And here at Team Trump, we are committed to doing just that. That's Love fabulous, <laughs> fabulous. Katrina, final thoughts. So, okay, you guys, I want to give a shout out to Damani Bryant Felder, whose Instagram handle is the Damani Felder. He posted a video from right here in Dallas, Texas. He was downtown having a peaceful dinner with many other black families, um, some who had small children with them, and their evening was rudely interrupted by what he calls mentally ill white people who were actually the Black Lives Matter protesters. Oh, jeez. So he posted this video on his Instagram of the white protesters screaming and yelling profanities in front of little black children That's who were nice. just there with their families trying to have a dinner on a peaceful Dallas evening. So his full observation is on his Instagram. I encourage everyone to check it out. It's quite entertaining to say the least, but this is a growing sentiment uh, of more black people who are taking to social media to point out that Black Lives Matter is not about black lives, 
It's about white liberals who feel the need to feel better about themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are people who are supporting this Marxist organization who's actually just profiting on white guilt. Um, and so this type of stupidity is spreading uh, far and fast. So I encourage more people to be bold and speak their truth and continue to expose this chaos for what it is. Stand strong, speak boldly, and stand for what you believe and never yes. let anyone shout you down. Just stand strong and bold because there are millions of Americans depending on you to help preserve our freedom and the right to have dinner in peace in our country. Wow, when you well, think they can't get any dumber, they just, <laughs> they oof, do. these poor kids. Well, really I got to tell you, you three women are three of the boldest women I have the honor to work with every single day. Seriously, uh. you all stand, stand so strong and it's amazing. But I've got some really exciting news. You're not going to believe this. Starting soon, Women for Trump will be hosting watch parties for the right view around the country. And they're going to be playing right view bingo. You got to see oh this bingo God. card. It's great. <laughs> what? It's great. Kids I want to see that. On it. And so anytime know. they mention like PPP or they mention Laura or Katrina, you get to put that little wow. penny down. Oh, that's bingo. great. So it's going to be a lot I of fun. It. But let me tell you, they'll be working the whole time all you day can long. You make that into a drinking game too, I'm just saying. <laughs> just saying. Ooh, that might be the next thing we do. The happy hours for the right view. I kind of yeah, like that. Good. But only after they reach about a thousand calls a day. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, what after the calls. Don't do it before the calls. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Although that could be quite entertaining. It could. it could be. I'm thinking. I think that could work. We could name the cocktails. It'll be a lot of fun. So, but if you want to be part of these watch parties near you, go to donaldjtrump.com and you got to be on the lookout. There might be some special surprise guests at some locations, ladies. Uh, hint, hint, one of you people or several yeah. of us people together. So it's going to be very exciting. I'm so thrilled and we're looking forward to, to getting on the road again, getting Kimberly and Laura on the road again as well. But I want to thank our special guest, Dr. Scott Schmidt, for joining us. And a huge thank you to all of our amazing supporters at home for tuning in. We will see you all next time as we continue to fight to reelect President Donald J. Trump and to make America great again. God bless you. God bless this great country. God bless Donald Trump.